Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now yesterday I tested the ray tracing capabilities of the Ryzen 7 8700G, an 8-core 16-thread AM5 APU with integrated 780M graphics. The results, while not reflective of an entirely playable gaming experience, were surprising. And today I want to bring you my full hands-on review of this chip after about a week of exclusive usage. So I'm not going to try and convince you that this is is ideal for those on a tight budget because as others have mentioned this costs £309 here in the UK and for that sort of money you could get yourself a more capable CPU and GPU gaming combo though you'd likely be sacrificing raw processor performance in comparison to what this offers. As a product in its own right however I find the 8700G fascinating and impressive. When I started this channel over a decade ago I was using an AMD A430 a dual core APU which was able to pump out around 30 FPS if I was lucky at 1024x768 in a handful of games. I must have remarked a few times about how one day I hoped for something that could essentially render older and lower end graphics cards obsolete. This might just be it. I've gone a little bit fancier than perhaps necessary with my 8700G build because you could absolutely pair this with a cheap a620 board and 16 gigabytes of DDR5 as part of a small form factor machine. The stock Wraith Spire Caller is also adequate. Asus kindly sent over an X670E Pro Wi-Fi board and ROG Strix LC3240 ARGB cooler for us to test the 8700G with, so I thought I'd put everything together in my Micro ATX case. In my opinion, this little build looks fantastic and this cooler will allow us to mess around a little more with the clock speeds etc. Now before I talk about my gaming experience, I want to mention that I waited for and updated the motherboard BIOS before running any benchmarks. Version 2413 fixed the STAPM issue that Gamers Nexus pointed out, and so the APU is running at its best in my system, just as it was yesterday too. The following gameplay tests were conducted with the stock settings using 32 gigs of dual channel 6400MHz CL32 DDR5. I tested a range of games and today we'll solely be focusing on the iGPU performance, as this is of course the 8700G's biggest selling point. Now I certainly could have gone a bit higher with some of the settings used and in other games I could probably have done with going a bit lower but it is of course entirely up to you and I think you'll find some of the following results surprising. So first of all I just had to start with Crisis. This is the original game from 2007, it does have a few little issues here and there, a few little hiccups but overall with the high preset and AA set to 2x we saw 74 FPS on average with a 1% low of 27 and a 0.1% low of 10. This is definitely crisis as I know it. Well, I used to play at low settings on a Pentium 4 machine back in the day, but this is how Crisis should be experienced, I should say, and we can do that with at least 60 FPS on integrated graphics at 1080p. Kingdom Come Deliverance is up next, 1080p with a low preset and SMAA set to 1x. Now, when this came out, this was incredibly demanding on the system I was using at the time. If we turn things up to Ultra, we actually get a warning saying that this is best reserved for future hardware. We aren't going to be using Ultra in this video, we have stuck to low, but even so, so the game looks pretty good and we're seeing 73 FPS on average with a 1% low of 65 and a 0.1% low of 40. Before I updated the motherboard BIOS this was stuttering all over the place. Yeah now it's fixed and it's running really nicely and I'm surprised to see a frame rate like this with a game like this using the 780mi GPU. Spider-Man up next with the medium preset and FSR 2.1 set to quality mode. Here is an example of a game that we probably could have chosen very low or low with and got higher frame rates without the need for FSR, but I th thought that the medium preset was a nice place to be here. And with FSR 2.1 set to quality, we can't notice that much of a difference in the resolution, to be honest, at least I can't. 68 FPS with a 1% low of 52 and a pretty decent 0.1% low of 42. The 8700G itself, the CPU aspect of this little combo, is very capable as well. So that does prevent dips and drops in the majority of titles. The graphics are definitely going to be the main limitation as part of this bundle. 
Counter-Strike 2 up next, 1080p with the lowest setting. Speaking of CPU, this is definitely more processor intensive, or at least CSGO was. Um, as you can see, this is utilizing R780 M to its full extent here, 192 FPS on average, with a 1% low of 138 and a 0.1% low of 117. So a very consistent gameplay experience, and Counter-Strike 2 remains competitive with frame rates like this, which is nice to see on this hardware. Grand Theft Auto 5 up next. I did start off with normal, but that was too easy for the 8700G, so I bumped the textures up to high, left everything else at normal, and chose the soft shadows with FXAA for 120 FPS on average. It seems we could definitely turn things up a little bit more as well. The 1% low was 97 and the 0.1% low was a very nice 69. The Witcher 3 up next, the next gen version of the game, 1080p with the medium preset, SSAO was enabled here, SSR was set to low and the FSR quality was set to well quality. Here we saw 63 FPS on average with a 1% low of 49 and a 0.1% low of 37. We could have gone with the low preset for a few more frames, but just like in Spider-Man, I felt that the medium preset with FSR2 set to quality was a nice place to be, combining a nice mix of visual quality and performance. Forza Horizon 5 up next, 1080p with a high preset, 80 FPS, no trouble for this APU, the 1% low was 68 and the 0.1% low was 64. You're going to have no trouble running Forza Horizon 5 with the 780M integrated solution. Battlefield 5 is a little bit older now, but it remains one of my favourites. Now, I played a Conquest game across three maps here just so that I could take an average this average turned out at 90. One of the maps ran lower than this, about 75, 76 FPS, and one ran a lot better, so this averaged out at 90 with a decent 1% low of 74. And of course, a few dips and drops here and there, 33 was that 0.1% figure, but this was very impressive, I feel, and Battlefield 5 is one of my favorite online competitive games, so nice to see I can run it without a discrete graphics card. Cyberpunk 2077 up next. I could have gone with the medium settings here with slightly more intensive FSR, but I went with the lowest settings, not just the low preset, I actually turned everything down to its respective lowest, including the textures. FSR 2.1 in this case was set to quality for an average of 71 FPS, very impressive in my opinion. The 1% low was 51 and the 0.1% low was 37, so more of a consistent experience than I thought it would be here as well, but of course the powerful CPU does help. Red Dead Redemption 2 with the ultra textures, everything else set to lowest. I did notice a bit of weird behavior here. Um, TAA medium was also enabled. Every so often we'd get like a little jump in performance and that is responsible for that. Uh, well, both the 1 and 0.1% lows are 41 and 35. Usually these are a little bit higher. You might be able to see in the gameplay that there's a little sort of um, line in the frame time graph every so often. And we could definitely feel this during gameplay. I'm not sure if we could benefit from turning the textures down or whatever, or perhaps it's just this latest AMD driver. This might be fixed in an update. Who knows? But it wasn't completely smooth, but it wasn't entirely off-putting either. Fortnite up next. In order to remain competitive here, we want as many frames as possible. We could have gone with the performance preset, but I went with low with 100% scaling. I like to target at least 120 FPS. I need all the help I can get in this game. FXAA was also enabled and we saw 138. So we hit the target and exceeded the target, in fact, that I had in mind. The 1% low was 95 and as always, the 0.1% low was a little bit lower than the 1% figure, which I've come to expect in Fortnite. This was sitting at 30 FPS. Now, of course, we also have the RT benchmark, RT Ultra preset here with Cyberpunk 2077. FSR 2.1 has to be set to ultra performance. We covered this yesterday, but I actually have some benchmark figures now. 35 FPS was the average. And according to the percentile lows, well, things were pretty consistent too. Now, of course, we can also make some tweaks to the memory and iGPU frequencies. We can also overclock the CPU if we want to, but the iGPU is going to be the limiting factor. I was actually able to push my memory to 6800 megahertz. 7000 megahertz meant that my games didn't want to boot, specifically Cyberpunk didn't want to boot, so 
took it back down to 6800 and I also bought the iGPU speeds up to 3.1 gigahertz stable after a little bit of tweaking. I have a few comparison results for you here taken from games with built-in benchmark runs. To start with, we have Cyberpunk 2077. This time we were running with the low preset. Uh, the stock 780M and the DDR4, sorry, DDR5 6400 hit 50 FPS on average. We saw the average increase by 5 FPS with Cyberpunk with the RAM and iGPU overclock. And the percentile lows were also improved. Forza Horizon 5 saw an increase from 84 FPS to 93 on average with our overclocked system. Again, the percentile lows were also, well, the 1% low was improved, but the 0.1% low wasn't quite as good. There was only a tiny bit in it, but this was worth pointing out. Red Dead Redemption 2, same settings as before, the ultra textures, all else lowest, TAA medium. This time we were running the benchmark run that takes us through sand and E, 56 FPS on average, and this was increased to 62, so pushing us over that 60 FPS threshold with the overclocked specs. The percentile lows were also improved quite a bit, but that sort of stutter I mentioned before still remained, which was a little off-putting, but it wasn't as bad this time around. Maybe all we needed was just a little bit of an overclock. Finally, we have GTA 5, high settings this time around, soft shadows, FXAA. Uh, I was running the in-game benchmark run here, which takes us through downtown Los Santos at the end. We went from 109 FPS with the stock settings to 117 FPS, so a nice bump up in performance, not only for the average, but the percentile lows were also more consistent as well. But that just about does it. I had planned on getting this video out earlier, but I was waiting for the motherboard update and I'm glad I did. My thoughts on the 8700G are that you could certainly build something cheaper. A CPU and GPU combo could easily be had for the same sort of money and in terms of the graphic side of things, it would outperform this. But as someone who's used APUs for over a decade now, it is always impressive to see just what they are capable of with every new generation and I think as the price of the 8700G starts to drop it's going to become a lot more tempting especially as A620 or B650 balls get a bit cheaper too. That's all for this one though as always I invite you to leave your thoughts down below in the comment section and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching.